Hello and welcome everyone. On the first video for this course, we are going to vectorize the illustration that we are going to animate later on. So first I'm going to go to File, Place and I'm going to select the sketch that I previously did and place it on the canvas. Then I'm going to double click on this layer and going to mark it as template, which will lock this layer and will reduce the opacity of the sketch. After that I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to call it Vector. So I'll be working using this layer. So as you can see, the theme for this illustration is coffee based. I chose different kinds of mugs of coffee, a coffee pot and a cupcake. So these are simple shapes and I'm going to use mostly the pen tool to vectorize them. So first of all, I'm going to be sure that the fill is deactivated by clicking on this red slash here. Okay, so I'll start vectorizing the first mug. So as you can see, I'm placing the first anchor point here at the middle. Then I'm holding shift to constrain the direction and I'm placing the second one over here. Then I'm going to click and drag over here. So this handle will appear, which will allow me to create this nice curve. And I'm going to repeat the same with this anchor point here on the middle, clicking and dragging to create a curve as well. Okay, at this point, I'm going to select the lines and I'm going to enlarge the stroke to five points. Then I'm going to click and drag while holding shift and alt. And so I'm creating a duplicate of that shape. Then I'm going to right click, transform, reflect. Be sure that the axis is vertical and click OK. And we have the other half of this shape. So we are going to click and drag while holding only shift this time to place it right next to the original. Now I'm going to bring the Pathfinder by going to Window, Pathfinder. I'm going to select both lines and click on Unite. And by doing that, I have created the entire shape. Now I'm going to take the Rectangle tool. So the smart guys will indicate me here when I'm in the middle of the previous shape. Be sure to have your Smart Guides activated by going to View, Smart Guides. So I'm going to stand here at the middle of the other shape, hold Alt, click and drag. By holding Alt, the shape will come from the center outwards. And I'm going to do the same thing for this other shape. I'm going to stand here at the middle, hold Alt, click and drag, and there we go. Now I'll take care of the round corners for this shape. So I'm going to take the white arrow, the direct selection tool. I'll click on this anchor point, then hold shift and click on this other anchor point. This will select both anchor points at the same time. And I'm going to click and drag on this little circle here, which is the live corners tool. So by clicking and dragging on these live corners, you can adjust the roundness of that corner. Okay, so moving on to another shape, I'm going to create the coffee inside the mag. So I'm going to take this big shape, go to Object, Path, Offset Path. I'll enter minus 15 as a value and hit Preview. So basically I'm doing this because I want to create the illusion that the glass is very thick, that you are seeing the thickness of this coffee mug. So I'll go ahead with minus 15 and click OK. But I don't want this new shape to go to the very top, so I'm going to trim it. So I'll take the line segment tool, create the horizontal line. I'm holding shift on the keyboard to make it perfectly horizontal. Now I'll select both the shape and the line and I'll click on divide under the pathfinder window. So there we have it. Now we have divided this shape on two parts. So I'm going to ungroup and delete the top part. And I'm keeping the bottom one, which is the one that I wanted. So everything is looking fine at the moment. Now I'll copy this shape by selecting it and hitting control C on the keyboard. Now I'll select this other shape and I'm going to hit control F as in forward to paste it in front of this shape. Now I'll hold shift and also click on this other shape. So they are both selected and click on minus front on the pathfinder panel. So by using that option, I have created a cutout of that shape. And I'm going to do the same for this part. I'm not going to use the pathfinder this time. I'm just going to modify the anchor points. Okay, so far so good. Now I'll take care of this handle. In order to do that, I'm going to take the ellipse tool and I'll draw an ellipse here and I need to rotate it a bit. So I'm going to place my mouse over the corner of the bounding box and rotate it. Now I'm going to adjust the position just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to select it and go to object path offset path. And I'm going to enter minus 15 here as well. 
Now I'm going to select both of these ellipses and click on this option called Exclude on the Pathfinders. This will trim the center part of this shape. Now I'm going to select this big shape, hit Ctrl C to copy, select this other shape, hit Ctrl F as in forward. Now I'll hold Shift and select this other shape, so they are both selected now. And I'm going to go with minus front on the Pathfinder panel. And there we go. So far so good. The first element is complete and I'll proceed to do the coffee pot next. So I'm going to just take the pen tool and start drawing straight lines for the first half of this shape. As you can see I'm relying a lot on the smart guides to create this illustration. This will allow me to have the illustration aligned from the get-go. So all the elements on this illustration are related and I don't need to align them afterwards. Now I'm going to take this shape, click and drag while holding Alt and Shift to create a copy. Then right click, transform, reflect. Then I'm going to place it right beside the other shape, select both shapes and unite them using the Pathfinder panel. And I'll do the same with the other shape. Then I'll do this middle part. I'm going to start here at the middle, hold Alt and click and drag. And there we go, it's perfectly aligned to the others. Now I'll take care of this little triangle shape. So I'll take the pen tool and start creating the anchor points. As you can see, this one is very simple as I don't need to reflect anything. And there we go. So for the lid of the coffee pot, I'm going to do the same process that I did for the other shapes. First, I'll create half of it then click and drag holding Alt and Shift to create a copy, then reflect and join both parts. The same thing goes for this little handle shape at the top. I'm doing this with every shape so I can be sure that they are all perfectly symmetrical. Ok, we're almost done with this coffee pot figure. We only need to take care of two shapes that are very simple. So to create this handle, this may seem complicated, but I have a very simple approach to it. So basically I'll take the pen tool here and I'll start drawing straight lines. I'll just do it as if it were a single line instead of a full shape. Now I'll select the line and go to Object Path Offset Path. And now I'm just going to enter a number, let's say about 15. And there we go, from a single line I have created a shape that has some thickness to it. So I'll just delete that line now. So now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make some minor adjustments to this shape. I want to modify some anchor points so they are aligned to the rest of the coffee pot. So as you can see I'm taking the direct selection tool which is the white arrow and I'm modifying some anchor points. Okay so now I want to select everything so now that everything is selected, I'm going to go to the stroke panel and I'm going to click on round cap and round join and this will apply to every line. I want all my lines to be consistent because I'm going to use them later on. They should all have a thickness of 5 points at this moment. So let's continue with the next element which is the cupcake. So I'll begin with the paper holder and as always I'm going to start from the middle and I will create the first half of this shape by using the pen tool and creating straight lines. So I'm going to use the smart guides to keep it aligned to the rest of the elements. So the top part can be a little irregular, it may not be perfect, that's okay. If you want to try to fine tune it, you can always use the direct selection tool to modify anchor points. But I think it looks quite good, so I'm going to duplicate it to the other side and then reflect it and then unite. Same thing as I've been doing for the rest of the elements. Now I'm going to create the actual cupcake. So using the ellipse tool, I'm going to stand here at the middle, hold Alt, click and drag. I'll make it about this size approximately and I'm going to drag it down a bit. And there we go. I'm going to leave this shape as it is right now, but afterwards I'm going to trim it. Now again I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I'm going to hold shift and click and drag to create perfect circles to create these little chocolate chips. Ok, all done. Now I'll move on to the last element of this illustration. 
So I'm going to start placing anchor points around here. So this is not a perfect rectangle. It has some diagonal lines, but they are quite subtle. So I'm going to use the white arrow to fine tune the position of these anchor points. Now I'm going to click and drag, create a copy, reflect, and then I'm going to unite, same way as I've been doing. Now I'm going to select the top anchor points here and I'm going to give them a slightly rounded edge. About this much will work. Now I'll create the contents of this coffee mug. So I'm going to take this main shape and I'll go to Object, Path, Offset Path. So I'll enter minus 15 as I did with the other mug. And there we go. So this will be the liquid inside the coffee mug. Now I'll select the bottom anchor points for this shape and I'll give them round edges. And now, as I did with the first coffee mug, I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to cut this shape using divide on the pathfinder window. Then I'm going to ungroup and delete this top part. Now I'm going to repeat the process around here because I want this one to be a latte. So this has foam on the top and the bottom is coffee. So I'm going to select both the line and the shape, always holding shift to add to the selection, hit divide and then ungroup. And now we have two different shapes, but I'm not going to delete any of those. Okay, so I'll create the shape for the handle now. I'm going to take the ellipse tool and I'll create an ellipse approximately this size. I'm going to rotate it a bit by using the bounding box. I'm going to adjust the position manually and then I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset, Path. And once again, we'll enter minus 15 and click OK. So this handle will look very similar to the other one. And now that we have that, we're going to select both shapes, go to the Pathfinder panel and click on Exclude. So again, I'm adjusting the position for this. I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard to do so. Now I'll select this big shape, hit Ctrl C to copy, select the handle, click Ctrl F to paste in front. Again, I'm going to select both shapes and I'm going to hit minus front on the Pathfinder panel. Okay, there we have it. So there are two minor things left. We need to draw a big line on the bottom of this illustration, on the table, so to speak. If you use the smart guides, all your elements should be aligned. So now I'm going to take the line segment tool, start from here where the smart guides are indicating me and just draw it. Perfect, there we go. You can also hold shift while drawing it to be sure that it's perfectly horizontal. Now I want to add a few extra lines to the coffee pot. So I'm going to zoom in, draw a line on the center. Same goes for the bottom part. Then I'm going to click and hold on the line segment tool on the tool panel and select this spiral tool. So this is an initial tool, but I'm going to use it to create the shape for the fumes. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to draw this line around here and I'm going to modify it slightly. I'm going to hit C on the keyboard to bring the scissors tool. What I want to do is modify this spiral shape so it looks more like a fume. So I'm going to cut around here and I'm going to delete this bottom part. Now I'm going to take the pen tool and I'm going to click on this open anchor point and I'll continue drawing this shape from this part. So now I'm going to click here, hold and select the anchor point tool and I'm going to click and drag around here so I can modify this part. I want to create a nice smooth curve for this line. So I'm taking my time to fine tune it. And there we go. I think it's ready now. Okay. So now that I'm happy with the result, I'm going to copy and paste. So I'm going to take this line, hold alt, click and drag and move it to the other side. So I'm creating a copy here. Then I'm going to transform reflect so it's looking to the other side because I don't want it to look exactly like the other one. I want to make a few modifications. So I'm scaling it down a bit, but always be sure that the line width is always five points. So it's very important to keep the line consistency. Before ending this video, I'm going to select everything and be sure that 
It's all five points, round cap and round join. Okay, this is all good. So we're ready to finish this video. On the next one, we'll start creating the colors for this illustration. So see you there.